Okay, class, today we're in section 9.9, .9, Model Relationships. Section 9.9, .9, Model Relationships. Before you studied linear, exponential, and quadratic functions. Now you will compare representations of these functions. Key vocabulary, verbal model, slope, and vertex. Sometimes you will find it helpful to model a function with a graph even if you don't have enough information to write an equation to model the function. Sketching a graph based on a description of a situation can help you understand the situation and identify key features of the model. Example 1. Sketch a graph of a real world situation. Firefighting. The water from one water cannon on a fire fighting boat reaches a maximum height of 25 feet and travels a horizontal distance of about 140 feet. A. What type of function should you use to represent the path of the water? Sketch a graph of the path of the water. B. In the context of the given situation, what do the intercepts and the maximum point represent? Solution A. The path of the water can be modeled by a parabola. Let x represent the horizontal distance in feet and let y represent the vertical distance in feet. So in other words, they told you that the height, the maximum height it reached was 25 feet. So you know your vertex is going to be somewhere around there, 25 feet. Now, they also told you that it went a distance of 140 feet. That's about right there. So, you know, you can get this in there. All right. Now, 140 feet. Remember now, here they're going by fives. So, that's 125, 130, 135, 140. Because the water cannon is on a boat, the graph has only one x-intercept where the water reaches the surface of the water or the ground. So this is the x-intercept. Here represents the height is uh, launched on the boat. The maximum point of the graph is where the water reaches its maximum height of about 70 feet from the boat. Okay, and all that means is here, about right up in there, is the maximum height at 25 feet. All right, and that takes place um, at about 70 feet. So. 50, I bet you at 75, back one, you're at 70. See? That's about halfway. And right there is the peak of about 25 feet. Example two, compare properties of two linear functions. Decide which linear function is increasing at a greater rate. Linear function one has an x-intercept of four and a y-intercept of a negative two. Then your function two includes the points in the table below. Solution. The slope of linear equation indicates how rapidly a linear function is increasing or decreasing. The points four zero and zero negative two are on the graph of linear function one. So its slope is 0 minus a negative 2 over 4 minus 0. That's going to equal to 1 half. Don't forget, they said that the x-intercept was 4. So that means x is 4 when y is 0. And they said the y-intercept was a negative 2. That means x is 0 when y is a negative 2. So we're going to use these two coordinates to find our slope. And don't forget what our slope equation was. m is equal to y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x of 2 minus x of 1. And that's what we did here. So we came up with 1 half. Now, the table for linear function 2 shows that for each increase of 1 in the value of x, there's an increase of 5 in the value of y. So its slope is 5 over 1, which is 5. So all they're saying there is we'll pick this part, but it's doing it for the whole thing. X is increasing by 1, and Y is increasing by 5. 
Well, another way of saying it, nine minus five is nine minus four is five. And two minus one is one. So you put your Y over the X. So five over one. Same thing here. 14 minus nine is five. Three minus two is one. So you end up with five over one. So linear two, excuse me, linear function two is increasing more rapidly. So this is going five per one. This is going one per two. Example three, compare properties of two quadratic functions. Use the given information to decide which quadratic function has the lesser minimum value. Quadratic function one, the function whose equation is y is equal to y is equal to 3x squared minus 12x plus 1. Quadratic function 2, the function whose graph is shown at the right. That's quadratic function 2. Solution. The minimum value of quadratic function 1 is the value of the vertex of its parabola. The x-coordinate of the vertex is negative b over 2a, and that's going to equal to a negative 12 over 2 times 3. Don't forget there's a negative sign on the outside, negative on the outside, and that b is a negative 12. Okay, so now a negative divided by a negative is going to be positive. So you end up with 12 divided by 6. 12 divided by 6 is 2. And we already know that once we find our axis of symmetry, we're going to take that value and plug it back into the original equation. So when x is equal to 2, y is equal to 3 times 2 squared minus 12 times 2 plus 1. So we end up with 12 minus 24 plus 1, which is equal to a negative 11. So the vertex is at 2, negative 11. And the minimum value is negative 11. So the minimum value of quadratic function 2 can be seen on the graph of the function. It is negative 9. So quadratic function 1 has a lesser minimum value. Okay, now bear in mind that on this graph, they're counting by 2. So they're saying uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So this line right here is 10. So that means halfway is 9. That's why the y value here for the vertex is 9. And the x value you can see is 1, 2. Okay, that solves that. Example 4. Choose a model for a real-world situation. Business. The table shows the revenue generated by a company during each of the previous five years. Based on the change per unit interval, Choose an appropriate type of function to model the situation. Solution. The revenue is increasing each year by about 3% because the quantity grows by a constant percent rate per unit interval. You can use an exponential growth model for the situation. All right, now they came up with the increase in revenue each year by about 3% by doing what we know we're supposed to do for a exponential function. You take 51,500 and divide that by 50,000 and you come out with 1.03. You take 53,045 and divide that by 51,500, come out the same thing. You get the same thing when you take 54,636, divide that by 53,045, and you come out with the same ratio, 1.03. And of course, when you do 56,275 and divide that by 54,636, you will come out with 1.03. Example 5, choose a model for a real-world situation. Furniture. You are a furniture salesperson and earn $200 a week plus a 5% commission on the total value of all sales you make during the week. A. Based on the given information, choose an appropriate type of function to model your potential weekly earnings as a function of sales. B. 
Sketch a graph representing your potential earnings for any given week as a function of sales. Identify the function's intercepts and interpret the meaning of each intercept in the context of the given situation. Solution. For every $100 of sales, your earnings increase by $5. Earnings are increasing by a constant rate. Use a linear function. B. Let X represent the weekly sales and let Y represent the total earnings. The Y intercept is 200 and represents your weekly salary when you do not sell any furniture during that week. The function only makes sense for X is greater than zero. So there is no X intercept. And so that concludes our lesson.